In this video, I'm talking about why it is that I do not recommend the use of supplements. Now, supplement use is ubiquitous today in the fitness industry. And there is a growing perception that in order to achieve any decent results, you need to be using some form of supplementation. And that's simply not true. This video, I'm going to talk a little bit from the heart about some of my experiences and also why it is that not only do I not recommend supplements, but I think the idea of searching for an edge and looking for something outside of yourself is not necessarily the perspective that you need if you really want to make a change in your body and you want to have both a physical and spiritual path towards self-improvement. Stay tuned. I will talk more about this. So we're talking about why it is that I don't recommend supplements. And before I go any further, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Thank you for the kind comment. Thank you for the private message I've been receiving as well. There's really been a tremendous outpouring of support for this channel. And do be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell. So you're first in line to get the new content as I put it out. So getting to the topic at hand why I don't recommend supplements. I'm going to start with a story. Once upon a time, there was skinny kid doing his best to build muscle. And he had this fantastic training partner whose name was Gully. Lester Jalvin was his real name, but Gully was the nickname we gave him because he had a chest like a Gully. And there was this brand new supplement that came out called hot stuff. And Hot stuff was called a metabolic optimizer. And we didn't even know what that was. Like, what is a metabolic optimizer? And I saved up all the money I had to buy a canister of hot stuff. And both Gully and I got a canister of it and we started taking it and we felt amazing. Our workouts were through the roof. We had like an, an, an almost unlimited sense of energy and it really was like nothing we could imagine. And it was just this regular supplement that we took a powder that you, you know, buy at, you know, a supplement store. But then one day it was no longer available because we'd finished that one canister and we we're trying to figure out how to save up some more money to buy another one, at least I was. And it was off the market. You couldn't find it anywhere. Then rumors started spreading, saying that it had been laced with something and that's why they took it off the market. And one day hot stuff resurfaced again. And of course, since it was a fantastic product, we were first in line to, to buy it with our hard earned money. And when we took it, it didn't live up to its expectations. I thought it was placebo effect and I saw for myself that people could convince themselves and make ridiculous transformations in their bodies just because they think they're taking something that's powerful when it really isn't. And nothing happened this time, zero. So we kind of forgot about it and fast forward to even about two or three years ago when I was, you know, looking at some videos here on YouTube. And there was a former colleague of one of, you could probably say the fathers of modern steroid protocols, who at the time was one of the people involved in making supplements, some of the major companies. And if you think about it, almost all of them are run by people who tend to use steroids or are involved in steroids. And I found out from this video that hot stuff was taken off the market because they had laced it with a drug called clenbuterol. Now clenbuterol is a drug that's banned in the natural bodybuilding competitions that I 
competed in. It's also, uh, asthma medication that's used traditionally these days for people getting ready for competition. So trying to lose as much fat as possible. Now the host and everybody else were all kind of acting like little children who got away with a prank talking about it. Oh, we know we put can be draw in there and it's no big deal, but it is a big deal. It is a big deal because if you look at, but dangerous drugs in supplements that purport to be harmless and generally recognized as safe products, we have a problem. We have a real problem. I want to talk to you about the problem that bodybuilding supplements can be. First off, consider this. If you're a natural athlete and you're taking a supplement and the person who is endorsing it is someone who, you know, for a fact is on steroids, why are you taking it? Do you really think someone who is using anabolic steroids, growth hormone, insulin, clenbuterol, diuretics is magically transforming because they're taking some creatine, you know, with their shakes? I don't think so. They look the way they look because they use drugs. And it's high time we start putting that to perspective and just moving on and not trying to find some magic potion because that search for magic is dangerous. It's dangerous because magic doesn't exist. Magic is something we create when we work hard. Magic is something we create when we eat right. Magic is something that happens when we do everything possible to create the circumstances for self-improvement and walk a path that's fulfilling and nourishing both physically and spiritually. That's when magic happens. It doesn't come from taking a pill. It doesn't take from drinking a shake. It certainly doesn't come from a pre-workout drink. And I want to talk a little more about that. I met the athletes and I'd ask them, do you use this? Do you use that? And they'd say, no, I just, you know, they send me complimentary cases of it and I talk about it and I promote it, but I don't actually use it. And that kept on being the theme over and over and over. And then as I grew into sport and those around me grew into sport, people who I personally knew, I saw them all of a sudden hawking these supplements and promoting them, even though they never used any supplements in their entire lives. Never. All of a sudden, these things were the greatest pharmaceutical grade made with the best products. And they were responsible for their success as well. Sometimes it was implied and sometimes they just come straight out and say, Hey, this is the reason why I looked the way I look because I used this and look how much of a change it made in my body. And it was all a lie. And I get it. People need to make money. People need to make a living, but isn't there a problem trying to make money and try to make a living if you're not being honest with the very world looking up to you? Now, I don't have a huge fan base. I'm not a big deal at all. As a natural bodybuilder, hardly anybody really knows who I am, but I did have some people who followed me and who looked up to me and I have my personal training clients as well. And that comes to me with a responsibility sense. The idea that you have these people who are looking to you as an example. And when someone looks to you as an example and a, to be an inspiration, that's not something that should be taken lightly. It's also not something that necessarily has to lead to profit. And if it does lead to profit, it doesn't have to be done in a way that's inherently dishonest. The problem is a dishonesty. I have so many young men and young women who are talking about how important it is to take this protein shake, how much they're going to change if they took this creatine, how much they're going to transform if they take this pre-workout. And the reality is. And what I want everyone to really listen to here is that natural bodybuilding, the bodybuilding competitions that are drug tested over the years with all the new things that we have on the market in this multi-billion dollar industry, where 
I would probably expect almost every single natural bodybuilder today is taking every single thing they can that's legal and allowed in order to compete. They look no different, no different whatsoever than the bodybuilders who competed back in the eighties when most of these things didn't exist. No difference whatsoever. In fact, I would probably venture to say that at the end of the day, it was the development of drug technology that made non-drug tested bodybuilding at bats. Back in the 1950s, 60s, the drugs that people used were nowhere near as much drugs and the different variety of drugs that people use today. And so the physiques changed. Some say progressed. I don't say progress. I say changed. That being said, you can look at a top bodybuilder in 2022 and look at a top bodybuilder in 1962, and you'll see a very big difference. And the big difference you see in non-tested bodybuilding is the drugs that they were using. Nothing else. Now let's compare that to natural bodybuilding. If we look at the top natural bodybuilders from the time that I started really seeing and being aware of natural bodybuilding in the nineties, where a lot of the supplements were used by a lot of the top competitors. And I know that for a fact, because I knew the top competitors and fast forward to today, when we have pretty much everyone kicking everything that's legal, that is, there's no difference in the quality of competitors. In fact, I would probably say that the average natural bodybuilder today with all the supplements and everything else they take doesn't look anywhere near as good, the average one, as the ones back in the nineties, because back in the nineties, there were more of them. There were more people doing natural bodybuilding. So you had people who had better genes, you had a higher genetic pool to pull from, and so you had better athletes. But if we take into consideration how fantastic these supplements are supposed to be and how it's supposed to change everything and, and, and help you transform and get leaner and get bigger and get stronger and perform better at the gym, there should be some sort of correlative change. We should be seeing ridiculous physiques up on the natural bodybuilding stage, probably even to a degree to rival the guys who use drugs. And we don't see that because it's not possible. It doesn't make that much of a difference. It doesn't matter how many studies there are or how much they purport that creatine or glutamine or any protein powder can make a big change in your physique and it'll transform you from where you are now to where you want to be. It's not going to happen because it's about making money. It's not about helping you realize your dreams. It's not about helping you get to a place where you can be the person that you want to be. That's something that has to come from you, not from someone you're paying. The wise and older ones always said it was so important not to rely on anything but yourself. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. We have a limited pool of energy within ourselves. We have to dedicate all that energy to believing in ourselves, not placing our belief and our faith in the false gods that supplements tend to be. It's not going to transform you. It's not going to make a difference. The difference is in your food. Difference is in your discipline. It's a big difference. Now, all the drugs, all the supplements that worked back in the day that are now banned were drugs. All the supplements that exist today that are not banned are food. It's just food. Call it what you want. A protein shake is a milkshake. Creating is something you get from beef. They're all just food derivatives. Now in the spirit of full disclosure, I want to talk about creatine and the fact that I do take creatine, but not for the reasons that you may think. You see, I have always suffered from devastating and debilitating leg cramps, something that my father seems to have as well. And there's never really been an explanation for it, but back in the day, back in the nineties, actually, when I was much younger and using creatine, I found that when I used creatine, those cramps went away. 
So it's something that I add to my daily regime, not for any type of performance enhancement or physique enhancement, because to be quite honest with you, over the years, I haven't seen any differences, whether I take it or don't take it, but I do see a significant difference in terms of muscle cramps. And there are actually, which I found out later, some studies that back up the fact that creatine does play a role in preventing muscle cramps. But as far as being able to recommend it as a performance enhancer or something that's going to really going to make a difference in your physique, I can't say so because I personally simply haven't seen it. And I really and truly hope this short video kind of gives you some perspective. Let's try and move away from this reliance on things that don't necessarily work. And the ones that do work, that did work back in the day, they kill people. People who make supplements aren't necessarily the best human beings on the planet who are looking out for your best interests. They're like any other corporation that you probably have a problem with because it's based on profit. Let's think a little bit more about this. Believe in yourself and Excelsior. Thanks for tuning in.